<laughs> well, here we are. Sheep has returned. Yes. Yes, as a reminder to us all that uh, if you don't want to be sheeple, then tune in to the inside scoop. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a bit of a hat. Yes, it can be as well. I prefer fur, as you know, we uh, tend to lose a lot of heat being bald people. I wonder if that would catch on if we were walking around with kind of sheep hats and, um, you know, a little sim symbolic gesturing. <laughs> That's a really great idea, actually. It would be, uh, yeah, it might, it, it might be sheer coincidence, but we might also be making a point. <laughs> we go to a political rally and there's like 20 of us, we got our sheep hats and we're just, we are... Yeah. <laughs> Have you been seeing any of the JP Spears uh, videos lately? A bit, yeah. How to get angrier. I, I think I that one spoke particularly clearly to me. I mean, the, the man is a. I think you're in his category of genius comedy, but he's 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 actually doing it. I think that. <laughs> yes, he is. He has put time in, and as we all know, that takes time. It takes time to conceive, and lay it out, and do it. Yeah, I am. Uh, I am very happy for him. What a guy, and for all of us that we can kind of see the ridiculous even in um, people that are earnestly uh, trying to be spiritual. Yes, <laughs> here we are. What a big uh, time! What a big week! We had a break, and uh, now we're back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you want to check in? You want to do a bit of a house yogi shampoo and I'll give a house cat and sweep and then we'll move from there with our lightning fast process. Yes, our process, our commentary on the current events as they relate to our deepest souls. I, I just landed and I'm just reminded of uh, that it does take your, your soul a bit of time to land back into any environment. I was in Ontario uh, taking care of uh, or being with family and older parents. And uh, as some people might be able to relate, that's a, a real thing. Uh, it, it's this full absorption and really trying uh, to be present, but also uh, relax any uh, agendas that uh, I might have that isn't what they want for their own life. And so it's how to be an effective, uh, not parent, but I guess adult child of uh, elderly parents. And so, yeah, that's been a real, real thing. Uh, lots of exciting stuff, uh, just being really, I feel so blessed that I get to, as a job, be able to be deeply authentic, spiritually uh, praying and meditating with people and sharing, exchanging energy back and forth with clients. And that's why I train so much is so that I can be highly functional with people in that way. And also I train so that I can feel awesome, but uh, it really is, uh, yeah. So, Yogi Shambhu's psychic line is doing very well right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'd have to say I, I'm not. I mean, I'm, I, I found this week extremely trying. Probably the last two weeks, I guess it, there, there's a lot of really good things happening. And there's also the, it feels like the larger archetypal energies, maybe with all these planets going retrograde, the eclipse, the new moon solstice I, I i found that the the depth of the feeling regarding what i'm the in constant insanity i seem to be witnessing and then it it goes into my personal relationships i i have such an assessment of what we should be doing <laughs> and as i i jumped into another sort of uh issue as you know and it sort of, again, it switched all my attention from the, the sort of the nice long-term, sharing all the community action that is happening. 
into, you know, the reality of the old growth forests, you know, doing research and starting to, to build the uh, website and, and then just having a, you know, this, this sense of if, if we actually don't do something, you know, they could all be gone in BC, you know, in a few years. And it just seems like there's this nonstop momentum of capitalistic greed that is, is, is a bit like out of control everywhere. And as we know with the, the fish farms. And so it just, the, the heaviness of that, and then the kind of the inevitable disappointment of trying to rally the troops that I feel, because I, I, I feel that my influence is very low in being able to gather the troops. So that's my check in. I, I kind of feel like hell a bit. Well, yeah, we're, we're, we're going to check in on that level. <laughs> I mean, that is something where, because I spend so much time um, managing my mind and, and triggering my hormones so that I feel great, um, it can seem like I'm not hurting on other levels, but actually, no, they're both happening at the same time. And I too, you know, we got together, um, you know, a bit earlier this week to talk about what what we're doing and we're both really starting to focus on uh, old growth forest and uh, what can we do to actually um, stop the last 10% of old growth forest from being cut down because that is what is wanted and I and I feel beyond anger I I feel overwhelm i feel um you know i feel helpless but yet still motivated i feel so much um and so uh you know i i haven't let myself attempt to rally the troops uh and so i don't necessarily feel that uh that pain so acutely you know because i'm just like pfft. I think that everyone is so o overwhelmed and distracted in their own life, uh, and, but hoping that, yes, there, there is going to be a functional crew that comes together. Yeah. And so, yeah, I would love to, you're saying that you're doing some research and uh, I've been doing some research as well. And I'm really excited to hear from uh, you, just the picture that you're seeing here in BC, Vancouver Island, and what is going on and I just want to acknowledge as well that you already have done a round of activism on the, the forestry front and so yeah you aren't coming out uh, as a um, yeah as a newbie here well I guess maybe I can dive into that a little bit in terms of as you know, a few years ago, I lived in the forest for about three months and worked with about 10, 15 other people. And it was the first time I'd ever really attempted full time to, to do anything really. Everything else is like a part time thing kind of. And usually you dip in and out, it's like a protest. You know, you kind of go for a couple hours and then you, 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 you nothing happens because you're not making a committed effort in one direction consistently. To, to achieve something, right? You, you have to really put a strong effort in and anyone who's a major activist who achieves results like Alexander Morton, you know, it's just like a lifelong dedication to something that they're tracking all the time and they're at the forefront of what's important. And I, the, you know, the old growth has always been, ever since my first, you know, journey into it is, you know, you, you just know you're in some sacred place that affects you so deeply and it's just so different from every other place at least I've ever been. And then when I live there, you know, I, I, I can honestly say it's the best feeling I've ever had in my life of living in the forest and, and being around that oxygen and just waking up to inside this sort of like paradise and, you know, with tents and not much else but just a different type of living. And then to go through the process of, you know, attempt at doing whatever you can kind of to stop it without much resources, right? I mean, you're, 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 you're eating from the food bank, you know, you're getting contributions from the community in terms of food and things, but you know, everyone there is basically pretty poor. And so there isn't, you know, the, uh, there's only so much you can do. 
and then to go through the process of like being thrown in jail, seeing what it's like in jail, which really sucks, <laughs> and you know, it's a good det deterrent. And then to watch, you know, no matter what you do, it gets cut down. They bring in this injunction, and then on the day it gets cut down, there's 30 people there. And, well, the, the day they're coming in, you know, to really try to stop things. If you had thousands, it would stop. If you had even hundreds, it, you know, there's probably a good chance. But 30, you're just mowed out of the way. And and I, I watched a, a girl, one of the a beautiful young women who, who was in the forest with us, she, she went catatonic afterwards. And, I, and, and in the depth of your heart, and what, if, what, what happens to you? And I, like for me, it was a good year or two, I think. I was almost, again, like, in, you know, there's such a depth of sorrow to watch your land. And this is just like in one example, I can't imagine, you know, for First Nations people all their life who, who go through this insanity seeing this out of control white culture that's just so greedy doesn't keep agreements and it's just you know it's covers itself up with its press and its media but deep down it's, it's just this horrible resource extraction system that's been in place for hundreds of years and all they're doing is just grabbing 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 to make money and you know it's the depth of how horrible it is in my in, in my mind and then you know again it's always the injunction and did you know they just passed this bill b1 that uh -huh. makes it illegal basically to protest uh -huh. like it, that's their counter to all the first nations blockades that were going up and it just came in like under the wire it doesn't seem to be now that's stateside is it that's that's here that's be like bill one act one or whatever the frick it is and it's, uh, I, I've got a meme for it, I can show you later. But anyway, I'll pass it back to you. But I mean. You know, to be able to carry on, it really does take all of us um, picking up each other as each of us spends time uh, falling to despair um, because that is the human uh, state. Um, and uh, all of us will experience that if we actually dare to engage in this fight. I know that I did uh, with the fish farms. You know, we, we got uh, the government, uh, you know, to listen. And as much as the movement did uh, get the government to listen that the Broughton archipelago here in Vancouver Island would have changed with the fish farms. And again, this is foreign owned fish farming, um, you know, with not that many jobs. And still you have uh, just delay and distract. And then finally they just move the fish farms out of the Broughton, but still on the same, uh, you know, migration route. So all of this is just, enough to, of course, to lead us to despair. And that's why it's so tempting to uh, take the other pill so that um, we can just live in our distractions. You know, oh, look at what's going on on Netflix. Uh, you know, look at what I can do. Well, I can, you know, go to the pot store. I can go to the alcohol store. This quarantine thing ain't too bad. You know, it's that type of distraction. And it's just so understandable. So I just really want to be, you know, present with you and say, God, I really understand. And I'm hoping that with clear, with a clear plan, at least we can feel progress. And I just heard a great quote from a Anthony Robbins this week that said, you know, to be happy, we don't need perfection, but we do need progress. And so if we can at least feel some progress, then hopefully we, we can stay hopeful and stay in the game because we, we got to stay in the game, um, even though it's against so many of our natures to do so. When yeah. you, like what I remember someone pointing out to me that I was really, um, I was in that depth of despair. And, and, and like the balance on the spiritual path of knowing there's these horrible things going on and yet being able to be joyful in your own world and i think that for me 
I have this five communication spaces map, right, where you have the personal space, the one-on-one -on -one space, the group space, community space, and sacred space. And I recently programmed that. I find these values really effective. And I put justice in the community space. And, and sort of shortly after that, I sort of went back into the old growth going, you know, this is one of the dearest to my heart. I've got to jump in. And I have like wisdom in the personal space. I have love in the one-on-one -on -one space. I have humor in the group space. And I have surrender in the sacred space. And to, to me, it's kind of like, okay, well, how, like in this situation, like, okay, how do I feel love with Yogi Shambhu? Or how, like, I'm spending time with one person, you know, you, you can generally just focus on that relationship, right? You, 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 you have a loved one, you, you, you share a lot of love with them. And yet, when we go into the community space, it's not that the love isn't there, but, you know, the, the different, like, I feel like I'm a very different person when I go into the community space and I'm playing a different role. And that's where kind of like the wizard comes out more in terms of like the larger issues to deal with. And I'm just wondering from your point of view, in terms of that balance between your internal emotional state of keeping a joyful place versus, you know, again, seeing the, the suffering or seeing the, the, these constantly horrible things we're seeing on social media. What, what, do, you, what do you do? How do you? Yeah. It's, it's about maintenance. It's about survival of myself over the long term. It's about giving myself and honoring um, my nervous system my neurological system i can only deal with things uh for so long each day before i need a sleep i need a rest i need to actually go offline and what you said was so powerful to me that in your spiritual space wisdom was the value there and i think it, it is the wisdom to know that you have to um have that break so that other things can live in your heart so it doesn't get exhausted the heart can get exhausted the spirit can get broken and so what do we do you know even uh, when there's a war on and there's a possibility of of attacks at any moment you still have to you know let the regiment sleep you still have to allow them to go offline and you take your spiritual space into all of the other spaces. And so you, you take, you have to take that wisdom of what you need as a human into your community space, into your one-on-one -on -one space, all of these spaces um, you are showing up within your, because you are ultimately a spiritual being is, is what my experience is. Yeah. So it's, uh, you know, there's a, a, a concept in yoga of Shanti, and Shanti is all pervading peace. And the concept goes that that is a frequency, that is a reality that's going on at all times. And you either choose to uh, open to that and allow that to ring out. You either choose to tune into that or not. It doesn't go up or down. It's always there. And so I think through training, we can do that. There was, there was a, a great Tibetan monk who was captured by the Chinese and tortured for years. And uh, when he was finally released, the Dalai Lama asked, so what was your lowest point? What was the hardest time? You know, half expecting, I believe, to hear accounts of torture. But he said, you know, my hardest time was when there was one afternoon when my spiritual awareness broke and I stopped feeling love. I stopped feeling peace and compassion. And that was my darkest hour, was you know, not when he was being tortured physically, but when he fell out of phase with his spiritual cultivation, the thing that we work so hard to uh, build and, ma and maintain. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I know it, it's illogical. We, we can follow our logic into being downtrodden, 
but we have to cut ourselves short, keep ourselves in our lane for the preservation of ourself, but also so that we can be the marathon runners that we have to be during this epic. I mean, the, the, this is an epoch time. We are really in a time when we got to act. And so I'm doing practices right now specifically to keep myself out of feeling tragedy and, 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 and stay productive. Uh, because I know if I let myself go there, then I won't be motivated. Can I, can I show you the website that I've been working on? Mm, sure. Um, just share the screen here. And so for everyone that's tuned in, we're, uh, this is the uh, Planetary Guardians, right? Their website based on... Well, actually, no, this is specifically the Old Growth Forest Protection Coalition. So this is looking at a, sh a web TV show that's specific to the old growth forest and then housing. So can you see it right now? Ah, uh, yes. Okay. Yes, I did. Thank you so much. The weekly show, the victory plan, the players. Okay. So like the front line, like if I'll take you through, it's not, it's not sort of ready yet to show, but the front lines is basically looking right now, we're looking at BC and then BC is broken down into those areas. And so, uh, you know, there are forest protection organizations that are very, you know, on top of things and they have campaigns in these different places. But I, 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 I think that, you know, what we need to do is we need to find people who are not um, in the battle, let's say. Like there's already groups that are doing it, but they need help. And there's First Nations, you know, nations that are defending the forest and they need help. So I was thinking, have you ever heard of the phalanx? No. The phalanx is basically the infantry formation that Alexander the Great used to, to win when he sort of defeated every army he went against. And there was a couple of battles where I think it was like, 60, 70,000 Greeks were faced against like a million Persians and their allies. Like there's this massive kind of battlefield. There's a million people over there and you've got like 50, 60,000. So you're outnumbered almost, you know, 15, 20 to one. But what the Greeks had is they had these 18 foot long spears that they go into a formation. Now I thought they went into a triangle uh, but when I was looking at doing research, it was kind of like more of a, of a rectangle. But you'd get these, these, uh, these soldiers all with these spears, and then they'd all put them down forward, and they'd be in rows. So you'd have this, basically, this, this huge amount of spears coming at you, you know, from 18 feet away. If you just got a sword, you, you got no chance. And then these, these guys would just kind of move forward. But it was, it was just, it was a formation that I always thought, attain victory and and I had this this idea to put the raging grannies if it was a triangle take the raging grannies and put them in the front you put them in the front that, that's your mother we're talking about yeah <laughs> and just thinking that no nobody's going to touch the raging grannies right mm -hmm. so if we look at um just get this here <clears throat> So th this is kind of what they look like, right? It, and I, I know we want to, this is a loving thing and we're not doing violence, but we're kind of looking at um, this Planted Guardians Old Growth Force Protection Coalition and then looking at, you know, who are the allies? So starting with the Rage and Grannies at the front, and then you've got the Planetary Guardian Media Teams, which are teams of four, Planetary Guardian Superhero Teams, which are teams of 20, and then you've got the BC Mavens, and they're kind of like, you know, anyone in, in, in the social media scene that has a large audience, First Nations media, and the community media, and then BC media, Canadian media, international media, the entire world, uh, the BC youth, BC university students, unemployed 20-somethings, BC elders, BC ethnic groups, Captain Sweep reports, uh, SKC support strategy, UN sustainability goals, world animal protection, world forest protection, and BC forest protection. And sort of seeing these all as their own little squares uh, and creating teams that address each of these. 
So, so we're going after all of these to be in the phalanx, and then we're gonna we're gonna get the PG media teams to start to interview and bring on the people who are leaders to bring their groups into this whole phalanx that at some point becomes this massive amount of people who all say no more cutting down the old growth forest. So, and again, they're kind of, um, we're looking at this as kind of like a new paradigm way of dealing with things. And we're, we're sort of at war basically with the old paradigm that is cutting down all these trees that to me are, are sort of like some of the brightest things in our, in our, in our world. And so, Again, their allies, like the members to me, would be like the First Nations tribes and nations that are actually defending the old growth forests. And the victory plan is looking at, you know, I like maps. So th this, is, this is like the whole value chain for the old growth forest. You've got the the retail sales, the end users, the manufacturing operations, the logging operations, the governments, and the First Nations tribes. And they're all involved in some way. And then there's current laws happening that are either protecting it or making it allowable. And some may be, you know, we can use on our side. And then there's the legal system, which eventually is basically the only way to, to, to do anything. Um, and then the justice system, which creates the enforcement of the legal system. So to kind of see, you know, who's doing, who is doing it, you know, how much money are they getting, you know, what is the process, and to really map out and really identify, you know, who are all the players exactly? You know, who are the, the companies doing the logging, who are the companies doing the manufacturing, who are the companies doing the retail sales, and who are the people that are using these? Because a lot of times some of these you know, old growth are going to make decks in Osaka. You know, like these, this wood is being used somewhere. And I heard that a lot of times that a lot of this wood is going to Japan and they, they, they'll, they'll put it in water and, and keep it there for years just to kind of uh, make sure that it doesn't dry out. Um, so having a weekly show where this would be part of it, like all the different shows I'm doing with other people at some point will be doing um, focus points within the old growth. Um, anyway, join the coalition and then looking again at, we're creating a shared knowledge community where we have a research team, an infrastructure team, a learning team, an ops team, creativity, synergy, services, interfacing, stewardship, communication team. So we're gonna create a shared knowledge community. And then tools, like the actual documents, like there's a lot of, um, like this this one just came out, the BC Old Growth Force, last stand for bio, biodiversity. It says like, there's kind of like 3% left, and then of the 3% of the land, there's only 3% that kind of like have the big trees on it. So it's it's like we're really getting down to the to the bottom of the barrel of what's, what's there. And then this was, this is the government's assessment protocol for old growth. This is an old growth forest protection act that was uh, put forth in 2013. Uh, the Royal Proclamation. This was just me starting to do basic research. I know there's so much more out there, but uh, this is just beginning to sort of fill in the um, all the pieces of the puzzle. Like this, this was just me in a few hours kind of putting this stuff together. If we get a whole bunch of people doing things like here's all the databases online to show what's happening in BC. Um, awesome. Awesomeness. There's so many resources here and this is really finally your structure um, has a yeah it has a focus that we can now start to utilize that and plug in. Um, I found doing my research that um, it was, it, it was such an important feeling having the resources that I needed being able to start to fill in these gaps because it's quite a picture. Why don't we paint for everybody the uh, uh, why uh, or, or what is the general picture here? of uh, what is going on. Um, just, just one final thing just to show you before I go back. Bill 1, 
So look at this at protests. Bill 1 criminalizes protests on roads, highways, trails, bridges, even sidewalks. He makes it punishable with fines of 200,000, six months in jail. Like it, it, now this changes the ball game, right? I mean, I don't want to go to jail, pay 200,000, but I mean, we have the right to protest. So how does this, how does, you know, somebody's got to go against that and win. And, you know, at some point, you know, they always use that jail card to stop people from doing things. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. And it is uh, boldly going up against ridiculous laws. Um, and I don't know how that will work out, but I do know that it, 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 it needs to happen, you know, or what is the other option? You know, I mean, uh, yeah. I always felt at some point, I, I, like when I was in jail that one time, and I sort of, I didn't give my name. People got out after one day and I didn't give my name in the beginning. Someone told me you should do that. And then they kept me in there for four days. And then I finally went, <laughs> fuck this. I don't, you're just in the cement block, right? And, and the funny thing is, all they have are books that are murder mysteries. Here you are in jail and the only books they give you are murder, really bad murder mysteries. It's like... Like, really, you're going to channel my mind in this direction right now? Yeah. They should have, like, reconciliation, peaceful, loving uh, stories in jail, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Anger management. Dude, there's something else I want to show you in terms of, remember, I was talking about that chat room being able to program. And so I showed you originally the uh, um, one-on-one -on -one the media teams, superhero teams, shared knowledge community and issue coalitions. Well, old Noah has gone further and I just want to show you this. Uh, this is very, very, very cool. Where is it? Elijah? Yo. You're gonna to have to pause it because I have to go pee. Okay, I'll pause. Just while he's peeing to the outside audience, uh, if you're interested in participating in the Old Growth Forest yes. Section Coalition, please uh, contact me. You're back. Okay. I'm back. I'm going to show you something that I think is going to blow your mind. Okay. 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 Let's let's see. Let's see where this is. Okay, so you can see this. This this is this is going to be revolutionary in terms of software. That the interface Noah had this great idea of, of it's a series of choices in order to build this chat room that's going to be programmed. Okay, so could you see could you see the screen? Could you see those uh, six? They're pretty small, right? <laughs> they are. They are very small. You're. Is this an eye exam or is this a software to develop? Well, we're changing this so when you go over it and hover, it's going to get big. So but it's basically <laughs> social field, service field, business field, friendship field, intimate field, and family field. Amazing. Okay, so those yeah, are, those are six sense. meta conversations within the inflow matrix. Yes. So let's say we just press service field because... Uh, this is, I, for the old growth, it's all kind of out of service. Then we have the five spaces, the personal space, one-on-one -on -one space, sacred space, group space, and community space. So let's say me and you are in a one-on-one -on -one space, okay? So now that creates the, the context of framing for the conversation, of looking, there's 30 conversational kind of like space fields, right? So you, you choose one from each column and it creates, okay, now let's say we're in a one-on-one -on -one space and we're going to give, let's say we're going to give ourselves 500 points. <laughs> oh, wow. Because we are doing this broadcast. Yeah. You get 500 points for creating a one hour show, let's say. Okay. So then, Does that mean I'm winning? <laughs> then you go accept and then you go, okay, select the mission step. So let's say mission steps, 
the start. And the mission objective is, uh, you know, to a one hour show. Okay. So now look at this. You know the old uh, spell for the uh, cards that you have choose the value lens. You can go choice or you can go random. Yes. So let's say you go random and you go acceptance. Now, do you want to accept that one or maybe we need something else? Uh, focus, focus might be good. You want yes. to do focus? Okay, so let's say we accept focus. So now we go to the convo type, and again, we can random or choose, but why don't we try random for a bit? See what comes up. Sharing. To look at how to share a specific resource that is either owned by someone or the group. What do you think? That's a great one. Yes. One? Well, okay. you know what? We, we can, all right. Let's see some more. Yeah. Okay, so random. Knowledge sharing. To share knowledge freely in response to some question, problem, field, or issue. I feel like we're in a healing convo. I feel mm. like I'm in a healing convo. <laughs> <laughs> so let's let's say I go let's say I go here and I go choose. And now here's like it's not research, it's not infrastructure, the different, it's uh you could kind of have to know the convo type. So it's in synergy. So let's say I choose synergy, and then so we've got appreciation, clearing, conflict, connecting, synergizing, okay, healing. Let's say we choose that. Can we choose that or you want to choose something else? I love it. Let's choose healing. Okay, so now we're going on. I don't know if he'd finish this one because this was what he was working on last night. But let's say we go, okay, he hasn't finished this one. So the others are coming up. So then... Then the other, the choice, the flow, the synergy, the harmony lens comes up, and then you can choose from there. And then, this, this is as far as he's got so far, but then, then there's the framing for a chat room with a timer, and then you press create chat room, you put like, let's say an hour, then you press the chat, create chat room, and then that can be embedded in the Old Growth Forest Coalition web uh, website. Wow, it's incredible, really. It's coming together. And suddenly I'm like, I wish I was a part of this all along and I would have gotten more money once you get rich. Damn it. <laughs> I, feel, I feel, yeah, I feel regret now. Yeah. Oh, there's gonna be a time where I'm gonna go to all you motherfuckers and I'm gonna go, this is what I was working on. <laughs> yeah, and then you're going to drive away in your vegetable oil-powered Ma Maserati. Yeah, damn it. Oh. Uh, see, Sweep, you're going to get it in the end. Yeah. If that, it. I if, if that can fuel you, that it, yeah, that you will be able to gloat like no one has gloated before, then I hope that at least that limited fuel will do yeah <laughs> to that's, keep you that shows through. how pathetic i am eh? like all i'm working for now is is so i can get to the point like in the movie where i can go <laughs> <laughs> so i would love to um give context uh, to why um this is so so important we're, this is as well a call to action um you know now that we've picked up our uh you know our brother here and uh, he's back in the game uh, why do why could we all care right now why does this deserve our attention at this time when so many things are going on here on the BC coast mm -hmm. uh, what is the significance of uh, the forest how did we get here so just a bit of an overview and some kind of highlights from both of our researches does that sound like a good exchange that, right yeah, now that'd be a good ending um, I would say, you know, we've had so much attention on COVID and you and I have been speaking about 5G and it's really, if anything, it's very controversial, right? There's going to be a, a for and against. We could jump in and I think we should jump in at some point, but it, to me, it, it's, it's, there's so much out of our control. And again, there's a large force of resistance. Now in, 
they did a study, I think, on the community, the coalition of communities, and they actually came out with a statement saying, you know, we want the ending of old growth forest. They, they polled the people, and I think it's in the 90 percentile of people who don't want the old growth forest being cut down. So to me, in the, the will of the people is there. The will of the communities are there. Um, there's so much work that has been done so far by the forest protection organizations. You know, there, there's so many sort of First Nations that, you know, basically want to just protect what is sacred to them. And so to me, it's, it's like smoking in a restaurant just before it kind of like got ended. It's just like everyone is fed up with it. They don't want smoke in their face. You know, no one wants the, 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 the forest being cut down except those who are making money from it right now, right? And that's like very, very few people and whatever countries are, are sort of taking these, these trees away from us. So to me, it's, it's a winnable battle. That's one thing. And the second thing is, if we don't do anything in the next sort of two or three years, basically they're gone. So winnable battle and, it, you know, and if we don't do something now, you know, it's gone. So yeah. if we could convey that, because I think like what we need is like a media storm. Like we have to use social media. We have to, you know, again, get those, get the youth inspired. Because as soon as you talk to them, they're on your side, right? I mean, as soon as you, you know, I, I want to go on a tour and we start doing the uh, on the road stuff, but we need something online that this website is actually truly generating, you know, hundreds of thousands of people across BC to join us and around the world. And, and looking at this is kind of like, again, that thin wedge at the beginning that we need a victory. We need mm -hmm. something where we win. And I remember watching this, uh, this thing out of Germany and they were trying to shut down. A, a train was coming across with all these you know, horrible things inside it. Uh, I think, you know, some sort of uranium uh, waste and thousands, like 15,000 Germans showed up to stop this and then the cops came and then the freaking like the farmers the germans got real organized and surrounded the cops farmers cut off all the roads and within 24 hours <laughs> the cops gave up and and it was the first time that i saw a major victory by the people and and, 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 and i swear there, there was like a jubilation within me of, uh, like it's like being on a basketball team and you've lost like 30 losses in a row and you, you don't realize that you're just kind of like in this day's state of okay we're gonna lose again we're gonna lose again we're gonna lose again mm. and then you have your first victory and you go fuck you know you know let's start winning instead of losing and i think in terms of activism and in terms of you know this insanity of social distancing and the freaking mask and like they're getting us to do stupid things just to break our spirit you know, there's design behind this. And right now we're in the midst of this real spiritual war. So, you know, we need something to bring the actual people who care deeply in their hearts to do something. So that to me is my, my pitch on the significance. Mm. Wow. My pitch on the significance is that um, our forefathers did something very wrong. And for the last one, 150 years, they have been logging in the forestry industry here on Vancouver Island and the whole lower mainland was really its focus, its mode of operandi was to log the valley bottoms of old growth trees. Their primary targets were old growth trees and to cut as many of them down as possible. At one time, we had 100,000 people employed here in BC um, in the logging industry. Now we're down to 60,000. So there is a reduction here of 40%. And why? Because we're simply, they have exhausted themselves and us, of course, of old growth logs. And so this is a, now a time where it's an inevitable transition as you said about smoking in the restaurants right before it changed. The writing's on the wall. People have to change. The industry has to change. And because of that, um, you actually have industry insiders who have been um, slighted, who have been bypassed. 
the li the uh, liberals of Christie Clark uh, they um, s they started to well they shut down the mills um, or they made it that you no longer have to mill BC lumber with BC mills that used to be the way it was is that if you were going to get our wood it would have to pass through our mills and so at least there was you had a higher value product leaving BC. And now with raw log exports, you know, this has uh, changed everything. And so now you have that wound inside of uh, the industry. You, you have them saying, huh, we aren't taken care of, we aren't valued. And so at least we have a leverage point in. And, and we also have a situation where if, if they are going to have any type of logging industry alive, we are going to have to majorly slow down the rate of cutting. And so if you look on a provincial level, uh, you have uh, the uh, rate of cutting is between 50 and 80 years. And so they let a tree grow for 50 or 80 years and then they cut it back down. Now, what is the problem of that? Uh, if you look at old growth forests in BC on Vancouver Island, especially the way that it was formed for millennia, is that it would be every 400 years, you, you, you'd have a major either forest fire or hurricane that would knock down a massive amount of the trees. And so that's the rate at which, because it takes at least 200 to 400 years for there to be those critical qualities that emerge that make an old growth forest so special. And one of the problems is, is that we are cutting so quickly that we are not allowing this, these, these major maturations to occur. So for us, if we want natural forest, which isn't just, just a, an aesthetic preference or some dreamy thing that some hippie thought of, it is the fact that the moisture capture, the uh, basically the thermal regulation that occurs on the coast, it's essential to keep the interior of BC from just becoming a tinderbox. And so the way that, that things are happening now, you have this, this new growth, the second growth coming up, but the whole height of the canopy is uniform. So there's no light that is able to pierce into the understory. Mm. And therefore you have a lack of biodiversity that mm. is going on. If you, if you walk around a second growth forest, what do you see? Mm. You basically just see like uh, telephone poles going up and down and yeah. nothing else. Yeah. You don't see the complexity, you don't see the moss, you don't see all of this varying heights of trees going on. Mm. And so the writings on the wall, we know very much what needs to happen. And also that the reform that can happen is for the good of everyone, including the industry. That, that we are talking about actually not ending an industry, but reforming an industry that is already past due. You know, yes, we will work to get over the horror of our forefathers just simply mowing down the greatest uh, beings that we've ever encountered. You know, greater than, you know, as great as blue whales, you know, these are the, the giants of our being, of our time. And so that's, I'm with you on that. I'm really feeling like it's the right time, it has to happen. And we have to look at that again. 90% of the productive old growth. Because when the government starts feeding you PR spin, saying that there's plenty of old growth left, what they're including is bog, low productivity old growth, and alpine, low productivity old growth. This is not where the, the giant trees are because we equate in our mind, oh, old growth equals these massive trees. Well, no, you can have trees that are 400 years old and they're only this big because they're growing out of a bog. 
and they can't be forested anyway. So of course they're going to say they are protected because why? Because there's no, they're of no use to people. And we know that the liberals, and I'm not saying because we ran into this thing with the NDP, they have fared no better, you know, but with this forestry argument or conversation, we have to point out who really started to market to the Chinese that they can have our raw logs. And that was something that, uh, you know, they marketed, we went to them. It wasn't like they were trying to knock down our doors. We sold and why did we sell for the short term gain of everyone? And the industry, it's not like the industry was happy. You know, there is a small group of people who are just, I have a job and that's it. But you know, there, there's a lot of people within the industry that is waking up and uh, really just my hats off to the ancient forest Alliance for uh, doing what they've done. And if we're looking for a win, we, we just have to look at avatar grove at a port Renfrew. They discovered old growth giants there and they were able to turn a community around and really get them behind this idea. And those people are loggers. And it's because of the sound reasoning that we're talking about that the ancient alliance, forest alliance, was able to really turn those people around. Yeah. Mm hmm. 1995, a forest practices code was formulated. When the liberals got in, they scrapped it. So it only lasted five years. So this practice code was going to be a government regulation that was going to be enforced by the government as oversight. But what did they replace it with? The uh, professional resilience uh, code, which is a industry enforced code. So the fox is uh, in charge of themselves within the hen house. And so you can imagine having, well, and this is what's going on in the vaccine world that really, you know, the people that are in charge of actually safety and trial these is the manufacturers themselves. And so it never works well. And uh, if, if government was involved with it, they would, it would be called a, a conflict of interest because it is a conflict of interest. Yeah, this is still going on. And we, we have to clue into this. Tens of thousands of hectares of ancient forests are logged every year in BC. The past 150 years has seen 75% of our productive old growth gone in, in 150 years. 90% of the valley bottoms, that's what you said, is gone. You know, and that's all of the giants. And so we're only talking about 10%. And so are we going to have that for our grandchildren ch uh, children or not? Because we either going to act in the next couple of years or it is gone. Yeah, well, I think I think we've come to the end of the show today, of this week's show. Um, so again, if anyone was watching this, please to the end, which could be a miracle. Uh, please contact either Yogi Shambu or myself, and we'll look at next week. I think if you're okay, we're sort of switching our focus, five G, uh, the COVID to ancient forest protection, and. Uh, Let's see what happens. Yeah, we have to keep our eyes on Clayquot Sound. Uh, apparently, there is a, up in Tofino area. There has been a um, on that sacred island, I believe it is. I just you know just saw the report. I didn't read into it before we came online. Is that uh, there is old uh, there is clear cut permits that are being proposed again for this area, and so even if an area is protected. It, it, it's it's only through overarching legislation change, policy change, that this can really be protected. So we have to uh, keep our eye out on the possibility of there going to be a huge uh, fight starting to brew again in the in the Tofino area. Okay. Well, all the fights across the whole province we need to be tracking, and uh, so we need people. We need lots of people to get on board on this and. Uh, 
thank you, Mr. Yogi Shambu. As always, it is uh, beautiful to speak to you. My, my heart feels uh, lighter and I feel as if uh, that the, the beginning of a, a larger planetary guardian team is brewing and that we are going to have victory this year. Yes, victory for the trees. All right, see everybody.